Uh, welcome to the shed. So I've been out to uh, the local market this morning, sort of like a car boot kind of market, and uh, I've made a couple of purchases. So we're going to do the usual thing, what did I pay for them, so comments down below, don't forget to subscribe as well. Um, so I bought this, and I bought this. They're both in pretty poor condition. Um, this one is a record number five. I think they call that a smoothing plane. It's miss missing a screw, a bit rusty. Basically, it needs a good old repair. Um, so yeah, we're gonna refurbish one of these. I think we'll do the, do the big one today because uh, the smaller one, which is a Bailey number four. Bailey is basically a, a Stanley, an uh, American one. No idea what the age is, quite old, uh, but that is in a real rough state. That is very, very rusty. So I might have to get some rust remover on that one. And that is basically one of these. And this is a Stanley version, number four. Although I've noticed that this one is quite a bit wider. So that's a big, big Stanley. Anyway, so the idea is for this to end up like this. Except it's this one. So first, first plane that we're going to do is the uh, bigger one. Uh, let's crack on. I'm going to move the camera over and we'll strip it down and have a look at the component parts. Okay, so we're going to put aside the Bailey for now. I don't know if you can see, but that handle's broken. The front knob is split as well, so that's going to need a bit of woodwork as well on that one. Uh, I might be able to fix the knob, but uh, I think the handle's gone. Okay, so we'll put that one to one side. And we'll work on the Bailey, uh, sorry, the record plane. So let's strip this down, see what we got. We've got a knob. That looks in reasonable condition. We can clean that up. Let's clean it down neatly. Um, so then we have got the actual blade components. Oh, excuse me. So this thing is looking in pretty poor condition. A load of that chrome is coming off, so I think we're going to have to just take that off and try and polish it up to bare metal. All sorts of gunk in there. Not sure what that is. So that goes there. Then we have got the blade itself, which, uh, yep. Doesn't look particularly straight. Let's get a straight edge on that. More straight-ish edge. Yeah, so that's definitely not straight. So that needs sorting out, as well as a lot of cleaning. Ooh, it's also twisted. I don't think that'll make any difference, but it is twisted there. It's at the top, not at the bottom. That might be just where it's been adjusted. Okay. And then we've got this bit here. Now one of these bits is called the frog. I can't remember which bit it is. I think it's this bit. Or is it that bit? I don't know. All of it needs is just a real good clean, really. Get rid of all of the rust. So the wire wool will be coming out and the sandpaper. If you're wondering where I've been the last three weeks and why I haven't put out a video, I've just been busy decorating and uh, job hunting, that sort of stuff. Okay, so maybe that's not called the frog. And that is, I think, painted. Can't really tell. Okay. And then we've got this adjuster screw here, which I need to try and take out. And 
there's the handle, which looks as if it's retrievable. I think we can probably, yeah, there's a bit of wear on the top there, but I think we can retrieve that. Okay, so there's my foot plate or the bottom plate. That's actually reasonably smooth. So a bit of sandpaper, we should be able to get that back to normal. So that's the first job is to clean this bit up. So if you can see on there, that does say record number five. So I haven't actually got any rust remover, so I'm gonna give it a go just with the uh, with some WD-40 and a bit of uh, wire wool, see if that'll work. If not, we might have to go to the shops and buy some rust remover. It's rather grubby, so I think we need to put some paper down. So it's a little bit of petrol on there. For all you US viewers, petrol is the proper name for gasoline. Okay, so I've got a little sort of uh, wire, mini wire brush thing, just to get the worst off. And then I can give it a rinse down and see what we're left with. Okay, gonna let that soak a while. My little wire brush isn't a lot of good because it doesn't quite get into the crevices, so I need to find something a bit uh, smaller. Okay, so I've cleaned that down, got rid of all the crud that was in there. It actually looks pretty good. It was blue originally, I found some paint. Um, it seems to be relatively flat, well, it is flat. So I realised that my pack had a variety from 800 up to 2,400. I started on the 2,400, should have started on the 800. Oh dear. Let's go again. You might also notice me using, uh, instead of the um, contact adhesive, spray mount, photo mount, I used some WD-40. What do I say about check twice? Measure once, I don't know, measure twice, cut once.
Okay, so I've got that not quite back to bare metal. I will spend a bit longer on it. But uh, yeah, pretty happy with that. I'm not sure where to mask it to. I think I just mask the whole thing and just paint all of that. Just mask those two little bits there. Yeah, so give that a bit of a clean up. Uh, next time you see me, uh, be masked up and ready to uh, paint. So I've cleaned up the um, the plate or the foot plate of the uh, uh, plane. I'm going to give it a couple of coats of this. I've masked it off. I'm just going to go and get it out of the oven where it's warming up to 50 degrees. Okay, so that's all warmed up. The reason I stick it in the oven is because the paint sticks better, and also uh, I then know it's dry. So I have been shaking this. I'm sure I can't see very well, but. do for the first coat it's going to need two I don't think that'll take long to cure not with that heat in there happy with that back in a mo so I've given that three coats in the end um, and now it's time to reveal Hopefully, should be okay. I'm not going to uh, touch the paint because it's still a little bit soft, as you can imagine. But I shall take this off and then put it to one side to cure properly. Probably will leave that a bit longer. Okay, well, I can show you how it looks. Nice and clear. The odd little spot where there's a bit of blue paint still showing through, but pretty happy with that for a first effort. I think I'll do better on the second one. Ideally, I'd like a nice uh, sandblaster or get it sandblasted. That's the only way I think to get it really, really clean. But not a bad job. Looking much better. Okay, so um, while that's put aside to cure, I'll let that cure overnight so it's before I start handling it. Uh, we can start looking at the um, blades and bits. So this should be a bit of an easier job. Let's put my gloves on because it's a bit, a bit yucky. So these have been soaking in a bit of oil, uh, petrol. And uh, so I did notice that the frog, if that's the frog, I think it is because it kind of looks a bit like a frog. I think that's the idea. Mind you, everything in engineering is called a frog, isn't it? I think it's just like the random name they come up with if they can't think of anything. Um, yeah, so I realised that that's blue paint as well. So once I've got that stripped, that will also have to have uh, some paint. Um, and then we've got the, the, the hardest bit, I think, is going to be this, which it's some sort of alloy that's been uh, chrome plated but the chrome's come off so I've either got to try and peel that off and go back to some kind of alloy finish which I think is the only option I've got or get it re-chromed which I'm not going to do that that'd be too expensive so let's have a little go at cleaning some of these bits hopefully this should be a bit easier the blade itself is actually in pretty good condition I don't know if you can see that but it's actually got a bit of an edge on it not sure you could plain wood with it but it's pretty good it is slightly twisted okay let's crack on with that
Hi and uh, welcome back to the shed. It's the next day, uh, the afternoon. Spent the morning decorating. I'm supposed to be going fishing this afternoon but never made it. Had to do some coving. That's not as easy as it looks is it? An hour and a half I thought it'd take me. It's been about six hours. Anyway, I'm back. You might have seen from my little intro picture there. Got all of the pieces uh, cleaned up and ready to go. Um, I think it turned out okay. I mean, obviously it's my first proper attempt at doing one of these properly. So um, yeah, I'm quite happy. It's not quite shiny as I'd like it. But I did realize, I say realize, but uh, what I mean is I've watched a video on YouTube on how to do it properly. I should have uh, flat, made sure that this was flat before we started. So before I assemble it, I'm gonna stick a couple of handles on it and the frog, because that apparently holds it steady. Uh, and we're gonna make sure that this is flat. So, uh, I'll just notice there's a bit of paint on there, that'll have to come off first. How we do that is we get a Sharpie, make a load of marks all over here, and then run it over a flat surface on some uh, 800 grit paper. And the bits that leave behind are where it uh, needs a bit more work. So, let's give that a go. I struggled getting a finish on the, the metal bits um, and I realised that I could use my wire brush on the uh, drill press to try and uh, get some of that crud off there. I say realised, what I mean is I saw somebody on YouTube doing it, thought that's a good idea. So just going to show you how that works. This is the before. You go get the idea much better do a bit more of that um, I also managed to get the uh, chrome off using the same method so if you remember this piece was chrome plated I don't know why they bling it up but I managed to get most of that off using the uh, the wire brush method okay this is one of the brass screws after it's been through the wire brush would have taken ages doing that by hand this is a ceramic tile from Wix, 4 99 That's my flat reference surface. A sheet of 800 grit paper and some uh, window cleaner. Oh, damn it. Brilliant. That's two sheets. Okay, so that's a sheet of wet and dry paper. Let's move that up. Don't think it's supposed to curl like that okay so we basically just run across that okay that's been about a minute I should think the cloth Actually, that's not too bad. It's a little bit lighter there and there. That's not bad at all. Okay, I'm going to do, carry on doing that for a bit longer just to make sure it's completely flat. And then uh, we'll start the assembly. I'm going to pretend that the blade is sharp um, because I'm going to do a separate video of sharpening the blade. So. Uh, I'll do that separately. So I flattened off the bottom. Wasn't too bad to be honest. A little bit of a slight high spot there and there, but I think uh, I am missing one screw. I thought I had a spare, but I don't. So I'm going to have to fix that handle tomorrow off the car boot sale again. So I'm going to use my Stanley number four that is isn't it, oh Bailey number four, Stanley, Bailey, I don't know, um, and I'm going to use that as a template so I don't get it all wrong, so like I say I'm going to pretend that the uh, blade is nice and sharp, it isn't, 
So this is called the iron, which is basically the blade. It's got a slight twist to it, which may or may not cause me a problem. Um, and then that is held together with the uh, chip, chip cutter, chip, I don't know, chip breaker, something like that. Yeah, that blade isn't very straight, so that's going to need some love tomorrow when we get to sharpening it. Tighten that up. Okay, so I'm starting the assembly. I fitted the little locating uh, lug thing on the bottom of the, of the uh, frog, which fits into this screw here, which spins and allows you to adjust the, uh, the frog against the sole. Two screws to fit that in. That holds the... Oops. Okay, so that's the frog lined up. If I need to adjust it, I've got a screw here which I can do that with. Also gives it a bit of extra strength because you've got three screws basically holding it in place. So I think that's about right. Tighten that up. Okay. So we've got our top iron, bottom iron, which is the blade basically, which I don't know if you can see that, but it's got a bit of a curvature to it, but we're gonna sharpen that up later. So that sits on there. This little locator here, hopefully you can see that, is uh, what is adjusted by the wheel. And the wheel should have done this while the frog was out, but that's okay. Uh, basically, just drops it again. It's got some little locators which drop in. I don't know if you can see that just here. They drop in there. They don't get fixed. They just sort of travel. Okay, so that's that bit done. The top iron then fits on the top of there, and if you've got it adjusted right, you should be able to just clamp it up, that goes a bit loose. This is to allow you to adjust things without having uh, screwdrivers handy. Okay, so obviously we've got a massive amount of blade coming through there, so we back that off. Quite a long way. There we go, that's coming now. That's now about, well, Rizzler paper. And then I can adjust the angle of it using this. So this will just give it a little bit of left and right. Okay, so that's basically it assembled. We need to sharpen that blade, so I'm not gonna demonstrate it until I've done that. Uh, I will put a link to the sharpening video here somewhere. Or is it here? I don't know. Um, so you can see how I do that. It's a fairly standard method. Uh, I'm not an expert, but it seems to work okay. Uh, yeah, so once I've got that sharp, I will uh, be back and I will show you this cutting something. That is it. So this is with no adjustment. Just taking it as it is, bearing in mind my handle's a little bit dodgy. <laughs> Too much. Got a nice knot in there. That is a fairly even shaving. Probably a little bit too thick. Let's back it out a little bit. Slightly thinner. Beautiful. I think I will back it out a little bit more. Just to go super thin. There's a nice knot in this wood, which doesn't help.
lovely good stuff okay thanks very much for watching um I'm pretty happy with the results of this plane. I mean, I think I could have got a nicer finish on the sides, uh, but it's fairly, I suppose it's tired. I, don't, I really don't know how old it is, but it's a nice nice looking beast now, isn't it? Looks good. Hammerite paint, not sponsored by Hammerite. Probably should be the amount I use. Um, just need to get that screw fixed in that handle, but I'm off to the car boot sale tomorrow. See if I can find one of those. So, next one to attempt is this which is a number four Bailey's so I guess that's that's the proper standy one but this is in a right state I'm not even sure if I can rescue that one so I don't know if there'll be a video on that I might find a better one and then just use this one for parts but this has got a wide foot it seems to be wider than my other number four blade itself actually isn't too bad so I've got some rust remover I'll see if I can uh, get some rust off it oh god it's almost seized up but we'll see what we can do with that. Uh, one of my sons expressed an interest in woodworking about a year or so ago. So uh, he's getting that for Christmas. I don't suppose he even remembers mentioning it to me. And I'm, I'm sure he doesn't watch the videos. So it's going to be a shock, isn't it? Okay, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, tell your friends. Uh, the link to the sharpening video will be down below or up here or somewhere. You'll find it. Thanks very much for watching. See you soon.